Let's welcome our keynote speaker this morning. He's the founder of Passion Hit TV. He's the founder of Digital Dads. He's the best-selling author of Content Rules. Please welcome CeCe Chapman. Are we awake? Can we get, okay, because you guys gave barely a round of applause to the Vail Resort, so I think you're doing a kick-ass job this weekend. I'm just, I'm so impressed by everything they're doing, the food, the drink, everything. And yeah, I say naughty words sometimes, so I apologize ahead of time if I do that. And that video was amazing, the little kid, I love it. I have a little girl who loves getting on camera, so I love that. So today we're gonna to be talking about how amazing things will happen when your content rules. I'm gonna to try to give you some advice, gonna to try to get you pumped up, excited about everything that we're doing. And I don't know about you, but this is my first time at TBEX. I've always wanted to co go. I, I'm, a, I'm a travel writer in hiding. I've always wanted to do that. So I almost went to Vancouver, and when Rick asked me last week if I could keynote this, I said, yeah, hell yeah, I'll be there. So I've been creating content my entire life. I love creating stuff. And I, and these are all real pictures. Most of these pictures in this I shot, which is, is fun for me, but I didn't shoot these. But I love creating stuff. I obviously don't like painting, but I, I have always been filled with a passion to create things. Whether it's blogging, podcasting, writing, photography, theater, all, I, I just, I like to create stuff. I've always loved to create stuff. And so last year, two years ago now, we wrote this book with the amazing Anne Hanley, who I wish was here. She's, she's a dear friend, she's a saint, she's one of the smartest people I know. Um, and it's funny, we questioned, did we need to write a book called Content Rules? I mean, come on. Everybody knows how to make content, right? I mean, it's easy, do we, see that? Do we need a book about it? Um, and what's crazy is it's gone on to become a bestseller, it's now in paperback with robot illustrations and all kinds of crazy stuff. I've been around the world talking about it. So I guess people did need it, and we weren't ready for that. So I'm here to kind of give you some of those rules from the book, kind of motivate you on ways to take your content to the next level. And I mentioned that I like traveling. This was a month ago. Uh, I had the pleasure and the honor to go to Ghana with the One Campaign, and uh, this was great because not only was I showing these boys probably one of the first photos of themselves, but I was showing them video. And, and it was, I still don't know who was smiling more, me or them. Uh, Absolutely amazing, amazing organization, uh, amazing trip. If you're curious, I, it's all out there. I wrote about it and everything, but I just wanted to show that I figure we talk about where we go. I mean, last night, everybody I talked to, we were talking about where we're going or where we've been. So this, is where, this was my last trip, five weeks ago in Ghana for a week, which was absolutely life-changing for me on, on lots of levels, so very exciting. So this is what content marketers usually think about. This is how I work in the business world as well. I do a lot of consulting. And I run into this every single day. You know, it's pitching, it's, you know, look at me, look at me. And it doesn't work. Yep. You need to do some of that. You have to have some exactly. hustle, you have to work your butt off. Yeah. Or do you but it ain't this. I mean, I actually, I have a filter. I've told this to every, every audience I've ever been good, in front of. I have a filter on my inbox that if it says for immediate release, it goes into the trash. And yet, but every day, still. And I've got nothing wrong with PR people. I've got nothing wrong with marketing. I ran my own marketing agency for a while and then sold it. I know, it's hard this doesn't work. Does anybody think this works? Because if it does, we can fight afterwards and I'll prove you wrong, all right? I'm very confident in this. This is the one thing you have to take away. Anybody can create content. I can give, my, I can give any kid crayons and paper and they will create content. Anybody can write, anybody can take photos, anybody can blog. But what are you gonna do that's gonna make you stand out from just the, all the other travel? I mean, this room is full of talent. Everybody I've met has been unbelievably talented and I'm amazed by the projects you're working on. But what are you gonna do to take it to the next level? How are you gonna make it engaging enough that people are gonna care about it, wanna share it, gonna wanna read it, look at it, like it, whatever, all the, you know, every day we have something new, plus one it, pin it. Did I get them all? I think I got them all, most of them. So always remember, content's easy. Content's a walk in the park. But making engaging content's harder. So you have to work at it and nothing, nothing is gonna get handed to you. You have to work hard in this business or any business to get ahead in life. I, there are no overnight successes. There is luck, there's benefits, but hard work is what pays off. I had my friend Hugh McLeod, who's a great artist at Gaping Void, make this for me. Uh, a lot of people think that's the way it works in this world, right? Uh, 
check him. He's at gapingvoid.com. He's got a great voice. He does amazing cartoons. Uh, he's for hire, too. He's great stuff. But this isn't the truth. We all know that. I think anybody who's in this room knows this is not the reality of the world we live in. We'd all love it, right? Don't get me wrong. I'd love to magically have bags of money handed to me for what I create, but it doesn't happen this way. So stop thinking this way. Move beyond this. You guys have a unique advantage over any other in vertical, I think, in blogging. I mean, you guys are taking photos on trips. You're writing about exotic places. You know, last night we were at the top of a beautiful mountain higher than I've ever been in my life. Higher elevation than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Realize that didn't sound right. Uh, I'm from New England. The tallest mountain is over 6,000 feet, so that was twice as high. I was not doing well. That. I'm glad my headache has passed this morning. Lots of water, lots and lots of water. But you guys have an advantage. I mean, I took this, I took this photo in the Bahamas on a press trip. You know, it was us goofing off, having fun. Your content automatically has an advantage over a lot. I mean, except maybe food bloggers. You're, you, I mean, they've got gorgeous stuff too. They're talking about beautiful food. But you're going to beautiful locations. You're experiencing things that only you are experiencing because every trip is different. You know, if, if anybody who's been to Ghana has had a different experience than I had when I was in Ghana. Same thing here. We're all having different experiences. We're sharing and things. But your unique voice is really key to this. So you've got an advantage over a lot of things out there on the web. And it's visual, right? I mean, I felt a little, I had a weird feeling when I put a Pinterest in this deck, you know, because I've got mixed feelings about Pinterest. But Pinterest has proven that it is a visual web. People want to see things more than ever. You can't just rely on only words. Our attention spans are gone. We want to skim pictures. We want to look at bullet points you know, really quick. And then if it catches our eye, we will dig deeper. So when you're thinking about the content you're creating, think about the visual aspect of it. I mean, in today's world, honestly, I mean, it sounds so technical, but if you don't have a, at least one photo with every blog post you write, you've already failed. Because when someone shares that or likes it or pins it or pick, pick whatever metaphor you want, the it pulls a picture, right? And if you don't have, usually, I don't want to get techy, but most, most blogs, they pull, the, they pull the picture from the blog post. And there's ways to get around that. Sure, there's technical things. I know WordPress is here. Ask them if you don't know how to make it so that a default picture shows up and everything. But you have to think visual. Things like Pinterest, things like Facebook, Google+, all these things are visual. And that's not going to change. I mean, we all sit down with our tablets and our phones. We're scrolling through pictures. We don't have time to dig in deep. When something catches our eye, we are going to dig in deep. So always, always be thinking visual, when, whatever it is you're creating. And you've got to get an emotional response, right? You have to, I always talk about you either want to educate or entertain somebody. When you're writing something, you know, getting your audience, your audience right now, you have all got audiences of some size or scope, right? They're easy. You've got their attention already. But what are you going to do to get their attention enough that they share it with their community? Because your community is easy. You want everybody else. You want the people who have never heard of you. You want the people that, for whatever reason, have never come to your blog. They've never seen you before. But it's something if you create and someone reads it or sees it and goes, ooh, I like that. I want to share that. That's when your audience starts to grow. It's the only way your audience is going to grow unless you're going to pay to buy eyeballs. And I don't know about you, but I'm betting most of us in this room don't have the money to buy ads on any network or anywhere to get people to come look at us. The way you're going to grow your audience is by other people sharing what you create. So always try, I always, especially when I'm working with businesses, I always say, would you share that? You know, because we've, I, I mean, we've all probably heard horrible pitches, crazy stuff. Um, for instance, I don't know if Cottonelle's here. If you guys haven't gone to the bathrooms yet here. <laughs> how insane. Okay, I have a rule. You do not bring a phone in the bathroom. It's the, I hate people who do that. But Cottonelle, I'm not, they have a great, the most genius, perfectly placed thing going on in the bathrooms. <laughs> and... But it got a response from me. I literally had to take out my phone and take a picture in the bathroom, and I felt so weird this morning doing that. But it got an emotional response. It surprised me. I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. You know, and I took a picture of it, and I shared it. And that's why they did it, right? They wanted to get a response from people. It's not every day you walk in the bathroom and have an ad actually catch your attention enough to take, at least for me, to take a picture and share it. I don't, I don't do that. So whenever you're creating stuff, think about what is going to get somebody's attention? How are you going to get them excited enough to share it? How are you going to get them standing up screaming like this? Granted, I, I made them scream because I told everybody to get up out of their seats and scream because I, I used to do that sometimes. If it was a really boring crowd, if they were like half asleep, it'd be like, get up, all right, primal scream time. Let's yell, wake everybody up. This is my favorite quote of all time. And it's one of those things that you really have to think about. 
The fact of the matter is, is that especially if you're doing it for a brand, or if you're doing it for a campaign, or even just for yourself, you've got to think up front, what, what am I going to do? What is my strategy? I don't know how many times I've been working with a client and they want to dive right into the exciting stuff, right? We've got to make videos. We're going to take pictures. Okay, why? Ask that question, why? You have to think about the strategy. You have to think about, well, what are we going to do with all this stuff we create? You know, you guys are, you know, you guys are all going to leave here and you're probably going to write posts about this. Think about, you know, well, what's the, your unique angle to it? What could you bring to it? Why, why is my post going to stand out from any others? And you should do that with whatever you're doing. If you're going on a trip, if you're working with a campaign of some sort, take the time to figure out the strategy. There is no, nothing worse than all these social media campaigns that we've all seen that you can tell they just kind of dove in. You know, it's the newest, shiniest tool. Let's play with that. We need a Pinterest campaign or we need, you know, I, I remember when Twitter came around and it was just, you know, hashtag craziness and stuff. Think about the strategy. Take the time. Think about what good old Abe said. All right, so you've got your platform, you've got your stage. What are you gonna do to rock out and go beyond that? Your blog's only so much. There's only so much you can do there, there's only so much audience you're gonna grab there, only so much money you're gonna make from there. So you've gotta think beyond just your blog. And I understand some of you have podcasts, some of you do video, and that's the stuff I wanna talk about. I wanna show examples from the travel industry of other options you can do with your content. Oh, by the way, any Black Keys fans who knew who that was? That was a great concert. I was in the pit, it was fun. So, video. How many people in this room are doing video on a regular basis? Wait, put your hands up. Wow, that's, I, I, thought, I thought, that's good. I wasn't sure what I would get, but video, you have to be thinking about. Maybe not doing, because I'll admit, video is probably my last frontier, mainly because I hate editing. I hate it with a passion. I don't enjoy it, and I know I don't enjoy it, but I like producing video from time to time. But Vimeo, if you haven't seen it, Vimeo's got this great HD travel video channel where every morning I just sit there in awe and look at these beautiful travel videos. And anybody can upload there. Um, all they ask is that it's high def. And they have a couple other channels. Uh, but they've got thousands and thousands, and it's been there for four years. But if you haven't gone out there, go out and check it out. Think about, you know, putting your videos out there. There's nothing worse than making a beautiful video and then nobody's seeing it. And Vimeo is a great community. I don't know if... You, do people use Vimeo in here? Amazing community, really helpful community. Uh, I had the chance last week to go to their film festival. Amazing staff, they're doing great, great things. Um, so definitely think about moving into video if you're not already. This is a great new book by my buddy Andrew Hyde, um, who took, he wrote 15 different little essays while he was on the road last year, and he just put them into a book. He self-published it, put it into a book format, uh, is now selling it you know, electronically, everywhere, he's also trying to get it in the bookstores. But it's a great idea because he said, you know what, I've got these great stories and they're, they're little personal essays, he's got little, he's got a mix of Instagram photos and pro photos, and he's out there selling his book. Now, listen, he may not sell a thousand copies, but you know what, every book he does sell, he's making money on, he set the price. He did a Kickstarter campaign to get it kind of going and everything to kind of make it happen, to pay for the, the printing and everything initially, because they're beautifully, they're, they're, they're like a coffee table book. It's a weird size. It's almost square. Um, but this is content he'd already created. And anybody can do this. I was actually kind of shocked when I was getting ready to go to Ghana. I went out to Amazon to search to see if there's any travel journals or travel books besides the big guys. And I found one. And it was this woman who, it, I, I couldn't figure out why, in, it, the way it read was very choppy. And it was because she wrote blog posts along the way and then pulled it together in a book. But there was only one on that. Anybody can self-publish on all these platforms now. Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, they've all made them all available now. The tools are out there. You set the price. You get, I know the commission's all different, but Amazon, 70% of, of the price goes to you. That's a lot more than I get when I sell a, one of my books for my publisher. It's not gonna magically happen. You're still gonna have to hustle, but it's an easy, easy way to make some money off of the content you're already creating. And now with things like iBooks, um, I don't mean to slam the nook, but they're kind of behind. I hope Barnes & Noble isn't here, but they're a little bit behind. But things like with the Kindle Fire now and iBooks, the way you can do it with photos and video embeds, you can do such amazing things with eBooks that you couldn't even do a year ago. And you guys are already creating the content, so don't shy away from thinking about doing this. This is another way you can make money. This is workshifting.com. They're owned by Citrix. So Citrix started this website in 2009 
to, to focus on the concept of work shifting, which everybody in this room, if they haven't heard the term, you're probably doing it. This is where you work from wherever you are. I live on my laptop and my phone. I can work from anywhere in the world as long as I have an internet connection. And they jumped on that. Now the way sites like this are out there, they're coming up more and more. I just recently got hired to write for them. So there are jobs, it's, but this isn't a travel blog, but they're looking for travel writers all the time. You know, in other sites like this where it's more business focused, this is on teaching business people how to work wherever they are. But there's an easy tie-in here for the travel world, for sure. And there's other sites like this creeping up. I happen to know, actually I know some of the sponsors here, are st whether they're going to say it or not, are starting things like this. So there's opportunities out there beyond just the, tra the traditional travel community. The business community loves great content and they're willing to pay for it, which is a nice thing. They don't always pay a lot, but it's an opportunity to get out there. If your stuff is good enough and you can get in touch with these people, don't shy away from things outside of our industry, or your industry, it's not my industry. Think beyond just your industry. Go to the business sites. Everybody knows this guy, right? Okay. He's blushing a little bit over there. Chris is an old timer, and he's been making the Amateur Traveler podcast for as long as I can remember. He's, he's creating this audio content out and about. He recorded a show yesterday uh, here at TBEX. Audio is an amazing, intimate, underutilized yeah. way of creating content. Um, with tools like SoundCloud and Cinch and other things, you can record from the field and share it instantly. And people aren't using it enough. And there's, oh, I saw rumors this morning actually that Apple might be releasing a uh, standalone iPhone-based podcasting app to kind of go after because they're getting their me they're getting kicked over audio. But audio is such a great thing. You can record in the field. You can just grab a moment, do interviews. There's so many ways you can do it. Or you can have a professional rig and sit down. There's a lot of things. But everybody forgets audio. It's like the redheaded stepchild of content, and it's such an intimate way. I know when I was in Ghana, I was using this app SoundCloud to record like my thoughts right at the end of the day because I had no time. I was like, I'm fried. I can't write. So I would just record my thoughts, and they were raw. And I mean, oh, man, one of them, I felt... I felt really awkward publishing it because I started crying while I was recording this. And I'm like, do I hit publish on this? You want to talk about a scary moment. Um, but everybody reacted amazingly because it was that raw honesty that people love to see. And unfortunately, when you hide behind your keyboard, sometimes we're not as honest as we'd like to be. Um, so don't shy away from audio. And newsletters. How many people in here send out a newsletter? Okay. What do you check every day a million times? You check your email. Forget every other social network. We, we all go to them sometimes. We all live and die in our inbox because they're ugly, big dragons. In our, I don't know about your inbox, my inbox is ugly. But newsletters are an amazing way to get your content seen. This is Trey Ratcliffe. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's an amazing HDR photographer. Yeah. Um, I don't shoot HDR, but I love his newsletter, love his site. Um, and he sends out a newsletter you know, once a month. And most of it, while some of it's original content, most of it is pointing to stuff he's already created. Like, hey, did you see this? I don't read his blog every day, but I read his newsletter every single time it comes out. And new, I, I can tell you, if I, send, I try to send out a newsletter once a month. I have the tools. I should do it. But every time I put in content that, hey, you might have missed. And every time I get people going, oh, wow, I didn't know you did that. So think about newsletters. Don't shy away from it. The tool, I mean, most of them cost a little bit of money, but there's really affordable options out there. Do a quick search, there's tons of options to do this. But you suddenly get a database of people who are interested in what you're doing. And then you can, you know, you can figure out later if you want to monetize that or run ads, there's lots of things. But the key part is you're gonna push your content out again. So don't shy away from newsletters. All right, some things I want you to think about. Always move forward with a goal. This goes back to Abe talking about sharpening that ax. If you don't know where you're trying to go six months, a year from now, and but you magically want money to come in, forget about it. You have to think about where you want to go. You have to set goals. This is more important than ever because there's so many people. Look at, around this room. For better or worse, everybody in this room, at some extent, is your competitor, right? You're competing for the eyeballs of people out there who enjoy travel. So if you're not figuring out what you want to do and how you're going to do it and what the end goal is, you're just kind of spinning your wheels and hoping magic happens. And it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Sometimes it does, but it doesn't. You have to move forward a goal. And usually when I'm in a room full of CMOs and executives, I really slam them on this one because it, it goes back to that shiny object syndrome. They just want it to happen now. And it's like, well, wh what are we trying for? Is it more newsletter signups? Is it eyeballs? Is it awareness? Are we trying to sell something? What is it? So always, if you, <laughs> please, and if you talk to a brand 
and they want to hire you for something, ask them what the end goal is. How are they going to measure results? Because if they can't answer that, you're in trouble. Because you don't know, there may not be a follow-up. There may not be more money from them. Ask them up front, what's the goal? What do you need to get out of this? And then you can start figuring out the campaign to make it successful. We all know location. Check-ins, right? That's all check. You know, Foursquare is the only thing with locations. Location is so much more than that. I mean, I know there's, there's photography communities now coming up based on the location of their photos. It made me start tagging photos. Pretty, pretty soon, it's not here yet, but context around content is going to be the most important thing. I'm going to want to arrive at Keystone next year, and I want to be able to pull up my phone and go, what is there to do in this area? And all of a sudden, I want to pull all the content that's been tagged local to here. That's really, it, the technology is like right there on the edge right now, but it's coming. It's coming very, 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 very soon, where your phone already knows where you are if you let it know where you are. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could go, where do I want to go for food around here? And it would pull up all the beautiful photos we were shooting last night. Wouldn't it be great if it pulled up all our reviews we we're going to write about the food? That's going to be happening. So think about location as you're creating it. Tag it appropriately. Stick geotags in there if you can. Um, I know I, whenever I shoot photos, if I want to remember the location, I sh there's, yes, there's security concerns and all that jazz, but focus on location. Think about it as you move forward. And you never, ever, ever stop listening. Listen to what people are saying about what you're creating. Listen for opportunities. When you see somebody, you know, maybe a business talking about, if there's someplace you want to go in this world, if there's something you want to achieve, set up search results to look for it. Set, you know, be on Twitter listening for that. At the, con at the conference, if you hear somebody talking about something and you want to go meet them, go over and say hello to them. But you've got to be listening. Too many people on the web just throw it out. You know, it's, I'm going to create, I'm going to create, I'm going to create, and then never take the next step of listening. Set up those vanity searches for yourself, for your brand name, for, for your company, for any verticals you want. Because if you're not listening, you're going to be missing out. And this is, this is a big one for brands, too. All the brands in the room, for the love of God, would you please start listening? Because it makes a big difference when there are people out, let's face it, we all, and everybody in this room has done this, we all love the, to gripe when something goes wrong, right? Twitter's great for that. Facebook's great. You know, crappy service at company X. Or, and I can't tell you, or even good service. I can't tell you how many companies, if I see a Twitter account, I, ta I put it in the, the tweet, good or bad, and 95% of the time I never get a simple response. You've got to be listening. Respond to people. Talk to them. They want to be heard. So don't skip over this. And think about where people are consuming your content and where you're creating it from. Because the tools are here now. We can create it anywhere we want. People are consuming it anywhere you want. If you haven't pulled up your website on a phone, multiple phones, or on an iPad, you need to do that to see if it works or not. I just noticed there's a kid here and I swore earlier. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you haven't heard before, I'm sure. Uh, uh, sorry. Wow. Talk about getting distracted. Um, but you've got to, you have to think about this. I love the fact that the technology allows us to create from wherever we are. Um, my wife thought it was funny because in Ghana we were FaceTiming together, no problem. But then I went camping with my dad in Vermont and I couldn't even get a cell service. So it depends. There's technology in the way sometimes and services. But where are people going to be consuming your content? How are they going to be consuming your content? Are you going to really have their attention? It depends on what they're doing and where they are. But always think about that when you're creating it. Creating a 20-minute video, might, you know, here I am telling you not to do that, but you know, passionate TV, my average episode is like 15 minutes long. But I'm assuming if people are actually going to watch that, they're not going to be on the go watching it on their phone. I assume that's an audience that's actually going to sit down and watch it if they're going to watch it. But I know that's going to lose me viewers because that's a long attention span in today's world. So think about that as you're creating stuff. This is the most important thing. You have to say hello to people. People, you know, whether you're standing in the line for coffee, if you're waiting for the gondola, say hello to the person next to you while you're here. This, this, I love this photo. This was at South by Southwest a couple years ago. And it's just, you know, it's us meet, random people meeting in the hallway, right? But um, has anybody read The Happiness Project in here? That's Gretchen on the right. She wrote that book. But New York Times bestseller for over a year. Um, there's a Forrester analyst there. There's one of the top parenting bloggers in the world in that photo. And this was a chance encounter in a hallway, and we all said, hey, what's up? And we just started shooting the breeze. You never, ever know when a simple hello is going to lead to something amazing. And so, it, it, I, I don't know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I'll talk to anybody. I don't care who they are. And I freak people out because I say good morning as I pass strangers. 
I don't know, it's the way I was raised. But make sure you're saying hello to people. Face to face will always trump online. I, don't, I mean, I love Twitter. I work from home, so Twitter's like my water cooler at home. It's who I talk to every day. But there's nothing better than coming to an event like this, putting faces with names, going beyond just the avatar. So please say hello to people. We're humans, we like to interact with each other. And if you're an introvert, break out of it. Say hello to people. You're not gonna get hurt, I promise, it's okay. But please, please, please say hello to people. So, and have fun. <laughs> so, I think, so here, we talk about content and having fun, right? We're at an event last night. For those of you who might have missed it last night, this is from last night's party. This is all chocolate. And it's, oh, it was so good. But, you know, think about it. Here we have a pastry chef, there's a big event going on, and they're, they're gonna create pastries for us to enjoy. It could have been the standard issue thing, right? But instead, they had fun. I mean, my kids are gonna freak out when I show them pictures of the tacos and the co I love the coffee. My, my picture of the coffee cups didn't come out as good, so I didn't use that one. Um, but they obviously had fun with this. And the key part about this is, so we, people think of content, they think virtual. But this pastry chef's content and Vail Resort's content last night was the food and the experience we were around. If they had made chocolate cookies, which by the way, stop with the cookies everywhere, they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> but if they had just made pastries that you know, we'd all seen before, it would have been like, huh, okay, they're really, really good. But instead they had fun with it. And now here I'm on stage sharing a picture of the pastries they created last night. You guys are gonna write about these. I saw all kinds of pictures of these last night because they were fun, they were different, they were something that kind of shocked you. You went, oh wow, that's really chocolate? And I'm sorry, if anybody missed this part last night, man, look at the photos because it was crazy the creations they did. But they had fun with it. And there's no reason you can't have fun with everything you're creating and doing. Don't, I, the, some, I get asked all the time, well, Cece, how do you separate personal and professional? I'm like, they're one and the same. I am who I am. You know, I have fun, I goof off, I post pictures of my kids next to, you know, other, you know, next to a professional post. Have fun with what you're doing. This stuff is a blast and you guys are traveling around the world. That's fun, even when you're stuck in an airport for 10 hours and your luggage is lost. Tr you know, have fun with it. I know it sucks, I hate it, but try to have fun with it. And thank you to, I just, I, I had to stick this in last night. I had a different picture, I'm like, no, no, no. These guys rock, gotta put that in there. All right, some content rules from the book, some detailed things you gotta think about. Speak Cuban. You'd be shocked, you guys all know this, right? The business replies to you or they're out there going, Vail Resorts is a very nice, you know, they, uh, speak human. Use your own voice. Your voice is the right one. Don't try to be somebody else. If you see somebody else's writing style, do not try to be them because you're not. You are you. What you say is what makes you unique. When I read a blog post, I don't care if they have one reader or a million readers. I'm reading it because something got my attention and I like their voice. It's what brings me back. I want you to be authentic, be transparent, be real. I think you guys get this. Again, brands are the ones who get stuck behind this. They get caught up in the red tape. Good old, my favorite people in the world, the lawyers. Um, just none of that crap. Be human, speak from your heart. It is the right voice, promise. Don't get hung up on, well, what's my voice gonna be? Think about it, think about your audience, you know? Because the way I write is different than the way you write. My audience on Digital Dads is very different than my personal blog. I do think about those things, but be authentic in everything you create. And then, whenever you're creating something, think about how you can reimagine it for another platform or another audience. You've all seen this, we've all done it. You create a post, and then you, po you post it to Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, Twitter, and any other thing that comes along. That's great. But what could you do to push it a little bit further? How could you reimagine it? You took a bunch of photos here. What could you do with those photos? Maybe you make a video. Maybe you go to Animoto and make a slideshow, which if you don't use Animoto, great service, not a paid plug, I just absolutely love them. They make slide, beautiful slideshows out of your video. If you have no technical skills, you throw all your photos in there and they magically make the magic happen. I don't know how they do it. But you could take those photos and do something different with it. Maybe you, taught, you did an interview with somebody here. Make a transcript of it. There's lots of different ways to think about it. Maybe, you only, maybe on your blog you only share a little bit of what you create and then on your newsletter you push out the whole thing. Always be thinking, I don't wanna recycle this. I wanna use it as much as I can. I wanna get as many people to see it as possible. But how can I reimagine this to do something new with it? <laughs> this is my daughter. <laughs> um, 
This was us stuck, stuck in New York over Valentine's Day weekend for three days when we were supposed to be in uh, Tennessee. So we were having fun playing on the beds. Rule one in the Chapman household, when you get to a hotel room, you jump on the bed backwards. It's just what we do. And I, I somehow caught this photo of her goofing off. But what it means is you've got to create wings and roots for your content. Do not rely on Facebook and Google Plus or any other site that you don't control as your home base. Because it's rented land. You don't own it. You do not control it. Anybody who thinks they own and, and, and can control completely their Facebook presence, especially from a business standpoint, is super misinformed. Facebook changes the rules every day sometimes. Anybody who's run a business page knows how frustrating it can be because they change the rules. They change, when timeline changed, it was cool for some people, but they just magically changed it. And suddenly companies who would spend lots of money had to change the way they did it. So always make sure your home base is something you own. That's your blog. I always, you know, if you, if, when, whenever I get a card and it's something, something dot wordpress.com or something else, I always get a little worried. Just because you don't totally own it, that, there's nothing wrong with that. Get started there, but as soon as you can, set up the roots so it's your website. And then when you tweet out or you share on Facebook, drive the traffic back to your website. Whenever I make a video, I put it up on YouTube, I put it up on Vimeo, but then I embed it in a blog post on my site and I share that link out because I want them to come to my site rather than going to YouTube, rather than going to Vimeo. They're smart enough. If they need to go to YouTube or Vimeo, they'll get there. But I want them on my site spending time with my content. So that's giving the wings to, to go out there and share. And listen, we talk about social bling. You want to have all those share buttons on your website. There's plugins, no matter what tool you're using, there are plugins out there to make that really, really easy. And if you don't know how to do it, ask somebody. There's great people out there who are willing to help you, but make sure you have all those share buttons and the plus one buttons and the pin buttons and whatever else so that your content has wings and can get shared out there. The last thing you want to do is get in the way of somebody sharing your content. There's nothing worse when I go and go, wait, I have to copy, I mean, I know how to copy the URL and paste it into Facebook or something to share it, but make it as easy, make that one click. It's always better. And when you're thinking about this, part of that strategy we're talking about is you want to build momentum. You want to keep building on it. Maybe you're going on a trip. You want to build momentum ahead of time saying, hey, I'm going on this, where should I go? Get a conversation going. When you're there, share photos along the way. Afterwards, keep people engaged, keep them talking about it. Because it, that, that, throwing that single piece of content out there and hoping it goes somewhere is not <laughs> gonna happen very often. You need to be constantly thinking, how am I gonna build up an audience? How am I gonna get momentum going? And once you get it going, how are you gonna keep it going? Because once you've got that audience, once they've come and engaged with you, you've got to keep creating new content to bring them back, right? Nothing worse than a, wow, too much coffee. I spoke fast. So always, I always speak fast. It's just the way I am. So always be thinking how you're going to build momentum on that last success so you can build it more and more and more. Oh, it says five minutes down here. I didn't need you. I didn't know I was going to do that. And stoke the campfire. This is, the campfire is the perfect metaphor. Um, for your content. Once you create, you know, you have to keep adding to it, otherwise the fire burns out. When you have people come to the campfire, come to your website and they hang out, you've got their attention. They're like, oh, I like it here. But there's a million other campfires out there that they can go to if you let yours go out. So you have to keep adding content. And also think about what kind of bigger content can I add? Can I add a white paper? Can I add a book or a podcast? What can I add to it beyond the quick, simple posts? And things like Twitter, little tweets and Facebook statuses are that kindling for the fire. You can throw them back in to rekindle things. Great, great quote. Back to the being human. This is Zach Arias, who is an amazing photographer that I'm in love with in Atlanta. He's just an amazing photographer. I haven't met him yet. Just be honest. Be honest with who you are. Be honest with your industry and be honest with the clients. People want you. They want your voice. They want your image. They want everything. Go out, this is on uh, creativemornings.com. He gave a talk recently in Atlanta. And then two days ago, this happened that I want to share that fits this perfectly. This is my buddy AJ. He's in Malawi right now, working with uh, WaterAid, building latrines and water services. And he was on Twitter, and he's like walking back, and I said, dude, have a good morning. Hope you and Howard are doing good. I didn't know who Howard was, but he was listening. And all of a sudden, he takes an Instagram picture from Malawi and tweets it out and sends it to me. He was listening. He was engaged. He was having fun. All the rules wrapped up in one nice little tweet, and I loved it. So this is my family. Quick thing. I need all the dads in the room to stand up.
because tomorrow's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, everybody. Thank you very much. A couple of questions, yeah, you see? sure. So if you have a question, please come up to the mics. There's, there's one at, in front of each row if anybody's got a question. And I think we have one question now. No, maybe not. That's just the guy sitting He's up the up. microphone. <laughs> okay. And I, put, and I put my contact information up there, so if you have questions after the fact, if you, you want to you know, tell me I'm an idiot, whatever, seriously, drop me an email. It's the quickest way to get a hold of me. Uh, and just put something about TBEX in it, so I make sure I pick, because my inbox gets crazy. But the mic doesn't work. Okay. There we go. Uh, one thing I struggle with is the uniqueness of content. Yep. Um, say somebody goes to Mexico. They tweet and blog about Mexico. I, in turn, go to Mexico. How am I going to make my content that much more unique that it's not going to mirror theirs? Okay. So did everybody hear his question? I can't tell how loud it is. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you forgot one thing. Who are you and where can they find your stuff? <laughs> Take the Plug it, man. Sorry, my name is Scott Much. I'm with Fifth Gear Adventures. Okay. Uh, tweet What's is Fifth Gear 250. What's Fifth Gear? Fifth Gear Adventures? I, I travel by motorcycle. Okay, there's the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I mean, honestly, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go to Mexico on a motorcycle. I wanna, I, I wanna learn to ride, but I've never learned to ride. I would bet that most people who go to Mexico don't do it on a motorcycle. Right there's your unique content. Grab a GoPro, strap it to the, do some cool videos while you're there, or tell stories about, you know, because I guarantee you're probably gonna run into some interesting adventures that people who go to a resort are not gonna run into. I mean, that, you answered your own question. The stuff you're creating, you have a whole website dedicated to motorcycle travel. That's pretty, pretty damn cool. I think that's, that's your unique angle right there. I don't mean oversimplify, but honestly, I think that, that's your answer. I, I guess my, I struggle with like monuments and stuff is where I often go to. Yep. Um, but everybody's tweeted and, and blogged about monuments. Everybody, so if you're gonna take pictures of monuments or anything for that matter, look for a different angle. I mean, this is photography 101. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way you see something, the way I see something is gonna be completely different. Look, you know, instead of taking that straight on shot with the person in front, which everybody's done, I mean, take that shot because you gotta get it, but then look for different angles. Look for something that's unique that you think is cool. Because that's, I mean, that's what makes photo especially photography jump out. Or shoot a video at it, you know, be a goofball, have some fun. You know, I mean, that's, that, 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 when it comes to photography, I mean, it takes a lot of time to shoot photos and, and think about what you're going to do, but you have to look for something unique. Good luck, man. Let's try the right and then the middle, Cece. Right in the middle, okay. Hi, Cece. Hey. Um, I had a question about... Who are you and where oh. can we find your stuff? you got to market yourself. I am, I am. I'm Kristen oh, with divasanddorks.com. Okay. Um, and my travel segment is Divas on Destination. So okay. um, I had a question about content. I, I seem to get um, more engagement via humorous content than more dramatic or controversial content. Is that the norm or is that, you know, it just depends on the audience? It depends on the audience because let's face it, humor's tough, right? Because what you find funny might be different than what I find funny. And the problem with humor too is, I always warn brands about this is, you can go from humor to upset and you know offended very very quickly you have to be very very careful about that but he, everybody loves humor right if you make somebody laugh mm -hmm. they're gonna be like oh, oh, oh I like this I'm gonna come back for more um, if that's what you're comfortable with I can't do humor I mean I just I've tried I can't do it. it's not my style so if that works for you go for it because of course let's face it most of like the my work my hated phrase viral videos you know most of them are funny people that people like to be entertained they like to laugh so if humor works for you don't change a thing but if you want to write something drama, don't feel like you have to be stuck as the funny girl. Mm -hmm. You know, if, the, if you're passionate about something that's more dramatic or controversial, that's the other thing. Too much on the web is vanilla. If you have an opinion about something, state it. Don't be scared to, to, to state your opinion. Everybody wants to play nice and, I mean, be brand safe, be smart, think about it. But if you, if you want to rip into somebody, rip into them. I mean, I, ask me, I've done it too many times. But no, so be, stick with what you're comfortable with and do it. All right, thank cool. you. You can Hi. tilt it down. Don't stand on your tippy toes. Hi, I'm Sam McCoy, and I write about inspiring lifelong learners. And all these kids stay on the track, and I also write about the awesome. And I have a question about balancing um, traditional rules of journalism with um, new media. 
Okay. So, anyway, uh, last week or so, that one of the uh, sessions talked about this formula, this 3 2 1 formula for blog posts where you have to plug this in, plug that in, and plug that in to create great content. Are you a journalist? I'm a freelance journalist and a blogger. So. All right. If you're not a journalist, screw it. No, I, I have no rules. You have no rules. Journalists play by a very set rule, set of rules, a, a traditional, true journalist. I love journalism. I will never, ever, ever, ever be a journalist because I'm too opinionated. And I know that. And there are millions of formulas. And some of them are strategically sound. Don't get me wrong. If it works for you, get on with your bad self. I should write, I should write a blog post at least two to three times a week, right? I mean, that's, that's the rule. I write when I have something I have to say. That's my rule. And that works for me. It doesn't work for everybody. So. You've got to, and the rules, especially for journalism in new media, is it's super wavy and gray right now because, let's face it, it's changing and evolving and we don't know where it's going to go. But unless you are a journalist and want to be a journalist, there are no rules. We, 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 our publisher wouldn't let us put rules and quotes on the, on the cover of the book because we view them, it's like, who are we to say what's right? You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're guidelines. So view anything as guidelines. There's no set right or wrong. That's what I think. Uh-oh. Mr. Scott. I guess I don't have to introduce myself. You've just done it for me. Yeah. So. Hi, I'm Scott uh, of Scotty Vest. I have a question. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the vest, by the way, Scott. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to meet everyone here. But my question is, is, as a brand, there's so many distribution channels between Facebook and posters and Twitter and now Pinterest. I mean, it's just, how do you focus? And, and where, do you, where do you put the stuff out? So that's where we talked about the fact that you need a goal and you need a strategy. You gotta think about where does it tie in? What content are we gonna create that we wanna share? You can't not be, I don't think any company or any, in, in, uh, any individual cannot be on every platform. I think you have to be on every platform. That being said, I use a lot of platforms as just a beachhead. They drive traffic to my site, you know. I set up the thing and I, you know, I pay attention to them, I listen to them, but I use them as a traffic driver more than it. Like Pinterest, I never spend time on Pinterest consuming, but I pin to there a lot because I know it's got a big audience and it, and it drives traffic to me. In your case, it might be something completely different. Like I'm not sure what kind of content you're creating, if you're creating lots of video or photos. I know I saw all the photos in the, in the photography seems like a big thing to you guys. So something like a Pinterest strategy would make sense because you have lots of beautiful photos all around the world. So I think that would be a smart one. But again, it's more about the strategy, the goals. Is it brand awareness? Are you trying to drive sales? You know, that's what's going to focus where you should go. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Last question. Well, last question. You pick. I'm not picking. Uh, I think Make she him was the bad here guy. first, so thank you. I'm Li Ling Peng from Trekaroo, where uh, family... And I am around for a little while today, so grab me. Okay. So um, we're from, I'm from Trekaroo, where a family travel site. Both um, user-generated content where a whole community of families can rave about the fun places that they're discovering, but mm -hmm. also we have a blog that complements our site, so we feature the stuff, like the best stuff, okay. um, what people are talking about. Um, so my question is, what, have, what value do you see in working together with other blogs and doing guest posts and stuff like that? Yeah, the, the power of doing guest posts is great. Um, because let's face it, you get your content in front of a new audience, right? And it's one of those things where if someone ever asks me to write a guest post, I get asked a lot and I always have to, I try to do it whenever possible because I love writing. But at the same time, depending on what your schedule is, depending on what's going on in your world, you have to be selective sometimes. And I always, I always hate that because I hate saying no. Um, but I think it's a great strategy, especially if you're trying to grow your audience. I know that's why when I set up Digital Dads, I knew I was never going to have enough content coming out of my brain. So I got writers to write, and I let them write about whatever they want. And I always make sure their byline plugs their stuff so that way they can get credit for it. And I'm always open for new writers all the time. So I think guest posts are an extremely great way. But make sure, especially if it's a high profile website, make it something unique. Make it something that you're going to stand out. Um, if you check out that Zach Arias video I was talking about, he talks about how Scott Kelby, one of the premier photographers in the world, 
gave him the chance to do a guest post. And instead of doing anything to do with photography, he made this great video about how, which is still, I watch it every couple of weeks, about how he gets down in the dumps and how he tries to get himself motivated. And it was totally not the norm, but it launched his career mm -hmm. because he did something unique and different. So whenever you get a chance, do it, and then make it unique enough that drives some more traffic. All right. Thank you, Cece, for Thank a you, great everybody. job. Thank everybody, give him a big hand. I'm Gary Arndt from Everything Everywhere, and you're watching Travel.com.